happiness is a state of mind, and if a lot of us don't learn to change our mind, we are going to spend our lives feeling very miserable. Hi everyone, and welcome back. Today I am making a video that I did not plan to make today. I was actually going to make a video on some of the bad habits I'm trying to break, but this morning I got up and I got the children off to school and I sat down to get to work for the day to work on YouTube and things like that but I decided to sit down first and do my five minute journal and in the morning it only takes three minutes because the other two are at night and then I read my passage from Simple Abundance Usually I read this at night, but for some reason today, I read it this morning. And the passage I'm talking about is January 7th. And it says, how happy are you right now? And it's a very short passage, but wow, did it strike a chord with me. Um, it basically talks about a woman who lives in England back in 1929, who didn't think she was living her life to her full happiness level. And so she started keeping a journal to figure out what were the little things that really made her happy. And it was it was really simple things like red shoes and uh, good food and laughing and answering letters or a new idea. And that got me thinking, and I'm sorry if you hear the pitter patter of little paws. After I finished reading that passage in Simple Abundance, I then picked up my journal because I wanted to have a conversation with myself because I had so many ideas and emotions and things going through my head that I just, I felt like I needed to write it down so I could get that aha moment, you know? Um, but so, so often, we are spending our lives looking for outside influences to give us that happiness, to bring us that sense of joy that we think we don't have in our lives already. And we're going through our life on autopilot. You know, we do the same routine day after day and we spend those days thinking we're miserable. Um, but are you? Are you really miserable? And so I kind of asked the question, what is happiness? And obviously, what is happiness? It's going to be different for every individual. But some of the ideas that just kind of came to my head was happiness is a kiss. Happiness is hearing your child laugh. Happiness is walking into the kitchen and seeing that it's just very clean and organized. Yes, that makes me happy. Um, Happiness is that first bite of an incredible meal, whether it's a meal that you buy out or a meal you cook yourself. That first bite, that mmm, that moment. You know? um, happiness is that simple task you do that gives you such a feeling of accomplishment once it's done. Right? And if you think about these examples of happiness, they're really small moments. They're, they're fleeting. You know, I don't think it's really possible to be happy all 24 hours in any given day. And if you were happy all 24 hours in any given day, would you even know how to recognize it anymore? But we're told through social media and through TV and through the books we are reading that, you know, you need to get more happiness. Everyone needs more happiness in their life. You need to achieve happiness. And if you do this, you will be happy. And if you do this, you will be happy. And we are bombarded with so many messages telling us we need to find happiness that I don't think a lot of us even realize anymore that you probably already have everything in your life to be happy. We're just constantly told we don't. And so we don't even realize it anymore. We don't recognize happiness for what it is. And, and we're on this endless quest to get more. But 
Why? Why are we on this quest for more happiness? I mean, unless your life is truly miserable, odds are you probably already are happy in a lot of ways. So, you know, maybe you hate cleaning the kitchen, but boy, you sure are happy when that task is done. Maybe you hate doing the laundry, but is there any greater feeling than sleeping on fresh sheets or putting on a clean outfit that smells of your favorite fabric softener, right? Maybe you don't like, I don't know, maybe you don't like going to work, but I let, bet you love your paycheck, you know, and even work, all right? Sure, there's aspects of everyone's job that we don't like, but there's also fulfillment in that work. There's also a camaraderie that you build with your coworkers with that job. So even in the things that we don't like, there's happiness to be found if we just change our state of mind or our mindset to stop focusing on all the negative and start focusing on the positives. Television, YouTube, media, pop culture, all of those things work very hard to tell you that happiness is a new outfit to be bought or a luxury vacation to go on or new makeup and products and, and you know, everything around us is trying to sell us something. But if those things really made us happy, why are so many of us buying the book by Marie Kondo, Tidying Up? Why are so many of us Googling minimalism? Why are so many of us decluttering all that stuff, all right? Sure, a new outfit will make you happy for a few minutes, but then the bill comes in and now you're in debt or you're spending more than you can afford on all of these superficial things that at the end of the day really don't bring us happiness. I love going on vacation. But a vacation is one week out of the year. So does that mean the other 51 weeks of the year we're all supposed to be miserable because we're not on vacation? My bathroom right now is filled with products that I'm about to declutter and either give away or throw away. That was money down the drain that I can't get back. And you know what? All those products... Apparently, they didn't make me all that happy if I'm, up, if I'm about to pitch them into the trash. I truly think we all need to lower the bar of just what it is we think happiness really, really is. You know, if we spend every day focusing on some grand idea of it, you're never going to have it. And even if you do get to that moment where you're living the grand idea, that moment is exactly that. It's a moment. It's fleeting. It's not going to last. So how are you going to be happy the next day or the next week if only that one moment is true happiness? Ever since I started Project Me a couple of years ago, I really have tried to focus on those smaller things that bring me happiness and by doing this it does kind of reduce your anxiety it does reduce your stress and it does make you stop feeling constantly miserable when you realize you're not really miserable you know this may sound silly but for me happiness is folding towels i don't know why but the action of folding the towels in a certain way and getting those clean lines and feeling the plush material between my fingers Folding towels makes me happy. I love ironing. Um, I actually lower my ironing board and set it next to the bed so I can sit on my bed while I iron. And I will just go back and forth with that iron. And there's something so gratifying about seeing just this mess of fabric that's misshapen and wrinkled and crumpled. And then the iron just, it takes it all away and it makes that garment look like new again. You know, and I'll usually have a YouTube video on in, in the background while I'm doing these things, 
but I just, I get such a sense of satisfaction from ironing. I enjoy cooking batch meals, meals that are like two to three times the amount of food I need because I get a satisfaction in knowing that, well, the next day I don't have to cook dinner at all because I've created all this food to feed my family for the next day or two or even three. You know, there's contentment to be found in that simple abundance of my family has enough food to eat. I enjoy makeup. You guys, if you've been with me, you know I love makeup. That doesn't mean I need 500 pieces of makeup in my bathroom cluttering me to the point that I can't even shut my bathroom drawers, which I'm kind of having that problem right now. My bathroom is the next to be decluttered in my house. But I love the process of putting my face on, of you know, girlying up in the morning. It, there's a real happiness in that. You know, happiness is swiping on lipstick and putting on eyeshadow for me. You know, there was a time in my life where I viewed those things as, oh, I got to do this. You know, there's, and I think we view so many aspects of our life as one more thing we have to do to the point that we resent those things. You know, I spent a couple of years resenting Christmas for goodness sakes because I was busy I was harried and literally I turned Christmas into work Christmas was just one more thing I had to do and two years in a row I went through the holidays miserable because I didn't appreciate it I didn't enjoy any of it I was tired and I was exhausted and Christmas just sucked and I look back at that now and maybe if I had just changed my mindset, you know, there can be joy in wrapping presents. Is it a chore that has to be done? Yes, but you buy pretty paper and you've got ribbon and bows and you fold it just perfectly and you decorate it and you know in your heart that you're giving this gift to somebody and when you give them that gift, it's going to bring a smile to their face and they're going to receive happiness and they're going to get happiness because you took that moment to create this package for them. So, you know, I needed to stop resenting Christmas. It wasn't one more chore to be done. It was actually something I should have embraced and enjoyed, but I was so on autopilot that I didn't enjoy it. I hated it. And and that's sad. <laughs> that's really sad that I did that to myself. Another thing that brings me great happiness is re-watching movies I've already seen. You know, I can re-watch the Harry Potter movies a hundred times. I have re-watched the Harry Potter movies a hundred times and I still enjoy it just as much now as I did the first time. I enjoy binge-watching Netflix. You know, for some reason, we are told that, you know, watching TV is bad for you. Why? Why is it bad for you? Now, if you're just watching TV seven days a week and you're doing nothing else, okay, TV is probably bad for you. But if a Saturday comes along and you tell yourself, I don't want to do a doggone thing today. I'm going to sit on my sofa. I'm going to find a new series I've never seen. And I am going to binge watch this from morning until bedtime. If that's what you're choosing to do and you're enjoying that, then you're happy and embrace it. Live it, love it, enjoy it. Don't let somebody else tell you that you're doing a bad thing because you chose to spend your Saturday binge watching a series on Netflix. A while back on Pinterest, I found an image that was talking about gratitude and it struck me so much that I actually like took a screen capture of the image and I want to share with you what I found off Pinterest because it is a mind changer. It makes you look at things in a completely different way. Waking up early equals children to love. A house to clean means you have a safe place to live. Laundry means you have clothes to wear. Dishes to wash means you have food to eat. 
crumbs under the table means you have a family sitting around that table sharing a meal. Grocery shopping means that you actually have the money to provide for your loved ones. A toilet to clean means you have indoor plumbing. Lots of noise means you have people in your life. Endless questions about homework means that your children's brains are growing. And if you're sore and tired in bed, it means you're still alive. That was so profound. I mean, and I took that screen capture probably a year ago, and it's been in my photos ever since. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gone through my photos and, you know, decluttered the if screenshots that I take, but I never decluttered that one because it still hits me. So many of the things we gripe about, there are people in this world who would give anything to have it, you know, especially the one, the toilet to clean. You know, there are people in this world who don't have indoor plumbing. There are people in this world who are still going outside to take care of their business. You know, there are places in this world where there are, there's real starvation. And, and even in America, there are people who go to bed hungry. And yet we focus on the negative. We focus on the fact that this food that we have to nourish our body and to nourish our children, we had to go get it. We had to take the time to cook it. They made a mess in the kitchen. It dirtied the dishes. And now we got to clean up all this mess. Well, all of that mess filled your children's tummies tonight. Happiness is a state of mind. Odds are you have many, many things in your life already bringing you happiness. I know I do. And we all really do need to stop chasing this, this dream. And, and odds are, if somebody asked you to define happiness, you would talk about happiness in simplistic terms. And yet, that's not what we're searching for. We're not searching for the simple. We're searching for the grand. Well, there's a lot of rich people in this world who are miserable. Money, wealth, luxury. If that truly was the answer to happiness, you wouldn't hear about celebrities committing suicide. You you wouldn't hear about all the celebrity divorces because why are they getting divorced? They apparently have everything they need to be perfectly happy. Happiness doesn't work that way. Happiness doesn't come from the outside. It's a spark in you, but you have to fan that spark and you have to turn that spark into a flame where you recognize the joy all around you and you appreciate all that you have because there are many people who have a lot less. With that, I'm gonna wrap up this video and I hope the video is something you enjoy. I hope you don't feel like I was preaching to you because trust me, I have spent many years in a really negative headspace and it took Project Me and journaling and reading and self-help books for me to realize I put myself in that negative headspace. My life doesn't suck. My life is actually really awesome. I have a wonderful husband who loves me. I have two boys that bring me happiness. Now, do my kids cause me, you know, headaches at time? Absolutely. But does that mean I don't want them? No, I would die for those boys because I love them and because they do bring me happiness. You know, I have a dog that can drive me crazy, but then he just looks at me with these big, sad puppy eyes and my heart melts. You know, I have a house that I feel is always cluttered and dirty and I'm always cleaning it, but it's a beautiful house. It's not that big or grand, but I love it. I love my house. Um, I just, I needed to get out of that negative headspace. And I will say a gratitude journal really, really helps. If you stop and 
every day write down three things that you're grateful for, you do start to see the positive in your life a lot more than you see the negative. You know, I could spend my days endlessly fretting about the fact that I have illnesses and pain. I could spend my days, you know, constantly focusing on that negative. I don't want to. I really, really don't want to do that. I'm choosing something different. I'm choosing to see the good and not the bad. You can do that same thing. You can choose it, but you have to learn to recognize it first. So with that, if you have comments or stories that you want to share, I would love reading your comments. I might not respond to all of them, but I do read every single one. And if you've had one of these epiphanies where you realized yourself that, why am I sweating the small stuff? Why am I so focused on this when I already have all of this? Share it down below because I do think when we all share our stories, it helps a lot of people. So with that, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna be a part of this community and get more content, be sure to subscribe and I will talk to you later.